Hey, good morning, how are y'all? Good. Good, this is sixth grade still? Seventh grade now? Awesome. All right, my name's uh, Mr. Swain. I'm the criminal justice instructor at the high school. Uh, I brought a couple of students with me that are juniors. All right, they've gone through all three levels of my criminal justice classes. Uh, they're gonna talk about the programs, uh, some of the activities that we do uh, that you can look forward to when you get to my, my class. So I'm gonna hand it over to them. All right, they're going to go through these slides and talk about it. After the slides, if you have any questions, all right, we'll answer them as best as we can. After the questions, I'll let you come down here and you can look at some of the items that they spoke about in the, in the program. All right, so just keep your questions till the end because they may answer them uh, as they start talking, okay? Go ahead, guys. So the first thing you're going to learn in criminal justice is going to be the career fields. Uh, the first one you're going to think to learn about is law enforcement. There's going to be state, uh, sorry, city, state, and federal. City is going to be like your police officers, uh, and st uh, state is going to be your uh, highway patrol, state troopers, stuff like that. And federal is going to be like the FBI. You know, you can go all over the country. Next up is private security. If say like a bank is transporting money to a different vault, they're going to hire a private security company. You can either be in one or you can start up your own private security business. It's entirely up to you. Legal services. This is going to be like your lawyers, your paralegals, your def DAs, defense attorneys, or your prosecutors. Next up is corrections. This is going to be like if you want to be a prison warden or a prison guard, corrections is going to be for you. Alright, next we have is fingerprint dusting, which is like at a crime scene, the suspect or suspects will go around and more than likely touch different objects or surfaces and the officers that are there um, to try and like figure out what happened will go through and dust different surfaces and objects that could be um, like related to the crime or that they could have just touched. And you want to do this so that you can then take the fingerprints and try and match them up with different fingerprints that are already in like a database. And once you do that, you can figure out who is whose fingerprint because no one fingerprint is similar to the other. Everyone has a different fingerprint. Fingerprint analysis is going to be sort of the second part to what he just talked about. Uh, once it goes into the database, it's going to be compared to a lot of different fingerprints of different criminals, people who have had their fingerprints already put in that database. Because, like he said, every single fingerprint is different. There's not the, there's never the same one, but there are different um, categories that can be that are that they're put in. Uh, sort of like everybody has different sort of sweat pores in their fingerprints. Uh, there's ridges, creases where your fingerprint, where your hands bend. A lot of things that you interact with on a daily basis come through. Next is weapons training. That's more of like a criminal justice end of the year, like criminal justice two thing, possibly criminal justice three. But that's where you will take our fake weapons and we'll go through and try and figure out the. Like how to hold a weapon, how to properly use a weapon, how to use it with a team, and how to um, like know when to use it. And, so handcuffing procedures, this is going to be a criminal justice two thing. What you'll do when you handcuff somebody, you hold them like this, right? I don't know if I actually have him come over here. You want me to handcuff you? Um, he handcuffed me earlier, so I'm gonna handcuff him. All right, so there's a there's a right and way, wrong way to handcuff somebody. All right, and we go through the proper procedures because if you do it wrong, all right, you can get attacked, you can get punched, and they might get away. All right, so there's a right and wrong way to do this. All right, the first thing you want to do is get some distance between you and the suspect and start giving them the commands. Because if I'm right up on him and I start giving them commands, what can he do? 
Mm -hmm. right, he can punch me, right? And he can push me down and do what he wants. So I wanted some distance so I can react. So I'm going to tell him to turn around for me. All right, put his hands behind his back for me. All right, spread your legs shoulder width apart. All right, bend over a little bit out of the way so you can't jump up and get me. All right, roll your sleeves up for me so it doesn't get in the way. All right, I'm going to get him ready. I'm not going to do anything when I get up there except put these cuffs on. As soon as I'm ready, all right, I'm just going to grab his hand, all right, put it on there, and then come over and put the other one on as fast as I can. All right, so if I'm doing all those commands uh, before beforehand, I'm just ready to cuff him when I get up here, and he can't touch me. All right. Go ahead, finish up. You want to do Yeah, go ahead. All right. The inmate processing, that's where, how I talked about earlier about that database, that's where you get this from. You'll, if you're prosecuted and found guilty, you will be um, processed through like the criminal system and they'll take your fingerprints to, find, to put those into the system so that once you're out, if you do, if you or someone else does something again, um, they can just pull up those fingerprints and find out who did it and such. Creating something that can repeatedly make the same thing over and over. Evidence collection is going to be toward, geared towards more of, uh, CSI or forensics. What you have right here is sort of, uh, there's a fingerprint duster, uh, there's UV light for any sort of bodily fluids, it's going to show up on this. Next up, we have these little vials, because if there are any bodily fluids, you're going to want to collect them, because there's DNA inside of them, you can identify somebody by them. Yeah, and you have these little containers. These are for like pills or something. The if you can, since bodily fluids you can't pick them up, you have to use a syringe to put them in. Basically, it's just forensics. You got you got a ruler in there because like in this photo right here, there's a knife in it. You got to measure this stuff out. There's, it's the same way with um, there's blood spatter, fingerprints, and stuff like that. <coughs> blood splatter analysis, this, this is where when you show up to a crime scene, you'll see blood splatter probably. And it can tell you what type of gun was used, like if a handgun was just used. Um, it'll probably just show up as like a small blood drop type thing that's on the ground. It won't really be like like everywhere. But if you use a more like high caliber weapon, you'll you or you'll see it like everywhere. Like shotguns, for instance. If someone got shot with a shotgun, there will be blood everywhere on the floor, walls, ceiling. It'll just be everywhere. But the different blood splatter can also tell you how far away you were shot from. Like, even if it was like a high caliber weapon, if you were shot from far enough away, it wouldn't look like it would be too high caliber. But things like that isn't all that common. Most of the time you'll just see um, either like a lot of blood or a little bit of blood. And you can see from there where the person was shot. Like if the body wasn't there, you can tell where the person was shot from and where the bullet hit and exited their body. Ballistics is going to be like this. So when somebody fires a gun, uh, sometimes the bullet's not going to go straight. It's going to go either sideways, up, down. It can go pretty much any direction. And from that, you can tell how they fired it, or what, or rather, what caliber was fired, depending on the size of the hole, or where they were standing from where they were from where they shot it. So, like this one right here is going out this way, so I'd have to be standing right here. And other things like um, if, say, I shot through another wall and then it went into this wall, it, it might have been a high caliber, but it would be way small. Yeah. Anthropology is where you will, like, 
take a look at to like the anatomy of the body to study that and see, you know, if like a bone, if they broke a bone um, before the accident, the bone will grow in differently and you can see that and you can judge based off that, you know, who got murdered or whatever. And as well if there's, um, if like the body was like burnt badly, you can look at the bones and such and see if they were shot, if there's like a bullet hole in like your arm bone, your it's called your ulnar or radius. If you see a bullet hole through one of those, you can tell, you know, where they were shot and if the, once again, if the bullet was high caliber or not high caliber. Air analysis, so pretty much everybody in here has probably seen somebody fight somebody before, right? Well, when that happens, they probably pulled their hair, right? That's going to show up like this, broken hair. Um, this is a major identifying part to see if, you know, if it was self-defense or maybe if the attacker you know, beat them. Cut hair is going to be a, a sort of identifying, you know, if the victim you know, maybe had a haircut and see how long ago he had it. Razor cut is sort of going to be grown back, you know, sort of a larger, you know. They had a haircut not too long. Um, it's also another major identifying part. It's got, there's DNA in it. And what's not on here is burnt. Burnt is going to be, uh, there's not much you can get off of it, but there's DNA in there that you can go to identify somebody off of. Anybody have any questions? Handwriting analysis is kind of like fingerprints in the way that you'll see unique similarities and like someone's handwriting. If like there was a ransom note left at the crime scene, you can take that with you as evidence, and then if you have like a list of suspects, you can have them write out something similar or you know just like a paragraph or something like that, and you can compare those. And if they wrote like their T's the same, and it's like a unique way of writing T's that you don't really see all that often, there's a good chance that they probably wrote the note. But um, at the same time, maybe it wasn't them. Maybe they just write their cheese like that. It's not a deciding factor of like, oh yeah, you did it. It's just to help you like narrow down the list of who did it. So footwear and tire track analysis is another major part of forensics in which that if there's if it's sandy or muddy, more often than not there's either going to be a footprint, tire track, or both left behind. Tire tracks are more unique to their vehicles in that if you know it was a very knobby, very aggressive tire, it's more than likely going to be either, either a lifted Jeep or truck. Or if it's an asymmetrical tread, meaning that the tread, tread is similar on both sides, it's probably going to be a more street, sportier car. Footwear is the same in, in and of like it's a fingerprint. If I was walking a certain way, my shoes would be, you know, burnt, run, run down in a certain way. That's going to show up on a, in a uh, footprint. And in criminal justice too, what you're going to do is you're going to put your foot in a, sort of a box of sand and you're going to make your own plaster and it's going to come out sort of like this as your own fingerprint or footprint. Finally, we have our field trips. The only one that we've taken so far is to the TBI Crime Lab, which stands for Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. That is like more your like state level of crimes. They'll show up and see if like this needs to be like state and if it or if it needs to be federal. Um, but things like if only like one guy was killed. That will still be left to your like homicide detectives and such, and it won't go to them more than likely. But um, it could. It really just depends on how bad the crime scene was or what happened at the crime scene. But when we were there, we just kind of took a look into what they did like day to day and such, not really what they did 
at like crime scenes necessarily and so we saw you know like how they would take like a fingerprint off or how they train their um, like police officers to go out and well try and solve cases and that's it I was, that's a general rundown of all of our classes that uh, kind of combined. I didn't want to go through each class because that would take a lot longer than 19 minutes. All right, but that's generally all the activities that you're going to see. Not not even all of the activities. All, those are all the major activities. Who's ever seen the show, uh, crime scene show like CSI or NCIS or that stuff? We basically do everything that they do in those shows. All right, it's just not as dramatized and, and action-packed like the TV shows do. We track the trajectory of the bullet, the blood spatter at the angle of the impact. We do all of that in the classroom. You learn how to do all that. All right, so uh, if you have any questions, we'll answer them as best as we can right now. Uh, after the questions, if you want to come down here and take a look at some of these items, you can. I just ask that you don't pick them up and handle them because sometimes some of them can break. Um, I also have flyers, okay? If you want to take one home to your parents, uh, talk to them about the program, maybe if you're interested in doing it. Uh, these are a lot of the things that we do on the program that's got my contact information if they have more questions. Right, are there any questions from you guys about the program? None? We answered all of them. We were that good. Yeah? So thank, hey, appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. So uh, what we'll let you do, if you want to come down, you can. If, if not, if this is your cup of tea and you're more of a welder, that's fine. All right, you don't have to come down and look at this stuff or grab this. But if it does interest you and, and tickle your brain a little bit, come down and get one of these. All right, and take a look at some of this stuff. And we can answer questions about this if you have it down here, okay?